Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original stories, not just read the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Chapter 12 The Winter of the Blue Snow Part 3 In the Lake States, Paul had found the trees to be the biggest he had ever seen. They gave him the best chance he had yet of using his big cross-cut saw, and, in fact, the trees were so big that ordinary men with ordinary tools could make but little impression on them. That had been discovered when he had sent out two monster crews, in addition to the seven axemen, hoping to make a record cut. The seven axemen of course, did their work with their usual ease in spite of the size of the trees, but the two crews got into an amusing tangle. They worked hard for a week, each man chopping away for all he was worth, before they discovered that they were all hewing away on different parts of the same tree. So big were these trees that when Paul wanted to see to the top of one of them, he had to call out all of his men to help him look. So it was not strange that one day, when one of these great trees fell into the big onion, it splashed all the water out of the river bed. The water was splashed so far that two settlers established farms in the bed of the stream and had their crops all ready for harvesting before the water finally ran back and washed all their possessions away. Paul Bunyan certainly did a wise thing in giving up all thought of trying to make use of this treacherous stream as one could never tell what it was going to do next. After he started skidding his logs to the Mississippi, his bad luck left him, and he began to get ahead with his logging operations as he had planned, and in a greater way than ever before. It was about this time that he invented the round turn, which is still in use, no better one ever having been devised. Turning the great blue ox about had always been a lot of trouble, as Paul had always done it simply by picking up Babe and setting him down again, headed in the other direction. He got tired of doing this so many times every day, and at last he figured out a new method. He taught Babe to walk in a small half-circle so that when he stopped, he was headed back in the opposite direction. This was the round turn, whereby an animal or team turns itself around instead of being lifted around, and it was such a sensible way that it is still in use. Nowadays, very few people follow Paul's old method of turning their work animals about. After Paul Bunyan had started using the Mississippi River for floating his logs to the mills, he one time made a mistake. He had received an order for a drive of logs from a big sawmill down near the mouth of the river, below New Orleans. The logs were made into a big raft, and Paul sent a crew of his men along to deliver it to the mill. When they reached their destination, they found the mill owner had changed his mind, and that he refused to accept the logs unless the price was made much lower than had been agreed. He, of course, thought that nothing else could be done except to take what he offered, since the logs were where they were, and it would be almost impossible to get them upstream again. Paul was not the man to be cheated in this way, however, and as soon as he received this message from his men, he determined to get the logs back and fool the rascally mill owner. He thought over the matter for a while, and then he went out to where Babe and Bessie were feeding. He gave each of them a hogshead or two of salt, which they gulped down greedily, and then he led them way to the upper waters of the river. The salt, which they had swallowed, made the two animals very thirsty indeed, 
and by the time they reached the banks of the Mississippi, they were eager for a long drink. Paul grinned as he turned them loose and let them begin to quench their thirst. They stood out in the water and drank and drank and drank, and so much did they swallow, and so fast did they suck up the water that the current of the river began flowing back upstream to where they were. They kept on drinking faster than ever, so thirsty were they. And together the great blue ox and the yaller cow drank so much that finally the big log raft floated back upstream on the current that ran backwards up to the river. Thus Paul got back his logs, and nothing was lost by the transaction excepting a few hogshead of salt. Thanks for joining us today. Check us out on Patreon. The storytime level is only $3, and you can help us meet our small goal of breaking even and covering our expenses. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. If you can't afford to support us financially, go give us a good review, subscribe or follow, and share with your friends and family. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can also send us an email at lostinrevisionpodcast at gmail.com. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road.